I would like to tell you about this idea I have about education, which is that fundamentally, it ought to be a lot more interesting for children to be at school than it seems to be in general. So I present to you today for the first time on the planet, five dangerous things every school should do, starting now, because the future is happening. Number one, let children be co-authors of their education. I mean, really, it's such a simple question, and it's such a simple idea. Children should participate in what they're learning, not just be consumers. Let's try a little exercise. <clears throat> Raise your hands if you were ever in school and you had like a, just a burning question to ask a teacher. Just a really important question. Now, put your hand down if the teacher said, well, that's a good question, but we don't have time for that. We've got to move on to the next chapter in the book. We've got to figure out this algebra. We have to... Whatever it was, it was clear that what you were doing in that class had nothing to do with what was going on in your mind. It's sad. It's a terribly sad thing to happen. Imagine instead... What would it have been like if that question had led to a conversation and that conversation led to more questions and suddenly what had been planned for the whole class the next day was put aside because this question you had was so good, the thing that we planned with the school administration pales in comparison. The goals we have as a society for education can all be met in ways that do not train children to be obedient or good at taking tests, passive to authority. We can achieve all of those goals, everything we want to learn, math, history, science, art, everything we can learn by following the excitement of the child. Number two. We should trust children more. We really ought to. They're very trustworthy. And they just love being trusted. They do so much better when we trust them. I think we've all seen a lot of pictures of classrooms today. <laughs> but the psychology, the architecture of this room is designed to reinforce that authority of the teacher standing at the front of the room and giving you precious knowledge that you don't know what it's for. And she promises that later when you're an adult, adult, you're going to use it, you know, and 50 years ago, it looked the same as it did 100 years ago, and 10 years ago, and f two years ago. If we decided that trust was important, if we decided to extend, let's start with the fact that we trust you, because with that trust, the children felt a sense of responsibility. <clears throat> and if we trusted them, they wouldn't have to ask permission to go to the bathroom. Like an adult, they could just wait for a good break in the conversation and go to the bathroom. I trust you. You appear to be on an important journey. <laughs> Come back as soon as you can. Number three, the default answer is yes. Just, just imagine what that would be like. Can I go on that rope swing? Yes. Can I help build classrooms this summer? Yes, you can. Can I build a room where we can try this thing I read about called high-speed photography? Yes, you can. Why not? That's going to be awesome. Yes, it's just about the most interesting answer to any question ever. Can I make fireworks? Yes, but first figure out how to do it safely and legally. It is, without question, infinitely more interesting than no. No is the most boring answer you can get when you're a child. So let's start giving them yeses and not beating over, over the heads with no. All right. Focus on habit and character instead of the test scores. Because you know what? You only need those test scores in school, and we don't use them. I hired hundreds of programmers in my life, and I never looked at their test scores. Curiosity. The exact same thing. You know, if every curious question you have leads to nothing, you'll stop being curious. It happens to everybody. It happens to children all the time. They just get less curious. 
Sir Ken Robinson, great TED speaker, estimates that by the time we graduate from high school, we have lost over 90% of our creative capacity. 90%. That is a global resource being wasted at, a, at an enormous scale. The answer to every problem we ever had has probably been thrown out along the way with all those millions of children being less creative. Number five. Let's agree, all of us here today, that everything is interesting, no matter what the topic. An activity seen from a distance might seem silly. Spend a day without sight? Yes, of course, Clementine, you can do that. What school would help them do that? We tell children, a camera works like an eye. We took apart a camera, then we took apart an eye. Now they know what the inside of an eye is like. <laughs> Everything that kids want to learn, or that we want kids to learn, can be taught in this way. Every educational goal. Life at school shapes how children see the world. We want them to see the world as wonderful, delightful, creative place that's worth protecting. That starts when they're six, and we don't stop working on it until they go out into the world and make change. So I say, let's be brave. Let's create the kind of schools that we want to see our children in. And if the government won't let us do it, let's cheat. <laughs> Thank you very much. Later, you present your results to the class using your fancy infographics. <laughs>